and that comes through in the music and I just, yeah, that is a scary feeling to know that um, you're a part of something that is so popular. I mean, I always kind of just underplay everything, otherwise I get too overwhelmed or like, I don't know what I do, but I'm always like, I don't know, maybe a couple people have heard it. Um, I'm just, I'm just, yeah, I, I, I didn't know what to do. To be <laughs> So I want to move on to talk about Jimmy Patrol. Yes. You know, when you get connected with something that has, you know, that's an established thing, what was your familiarity, if anything, with with the, the source material, or do you do you go into this going, I'm going to discover this character on my own? Yeah, I didn't know anything about the Doom Patrol. You know, to be honest, I wasn't. I mean, um, I've always liked DC. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I like Batman, Batman, I like the Joker, I, um, Harley Quinn, all of these characters, I like X-Men, where is X-Men from? Okay, well hold on, well hold on, X-Men, right, was, is like a derivative of Doom Patrol, right? Like, Doom Patrol was first, for the heads out there, and then X-Men came <laughs> I got the, uh, the character, you know, the minute I had uh, the, the audition, they didn't tell me what it was for, I had no idea it was a superhero or anything, just that this woman with multiple personalities, and um, that was something that I was just really wanting to do, is to show, like, different sides of myself, because, you know, when you first start off, you do gigs that, like, you know, are, are wonderful and exciting, but sometimes you want to show much more. Um, and I wanted to cut off Nazi heads, you know, and become a zombie, and, you know, eat zombie butts, but only to kill them, not because we like them or anything. But we were zombies at the time, so you can't blame us. Um, so I wanted to do, I wanted to do far out the like because I've always had that inside me. I know we, I've always, you know, I've, I'm obscure, I'm a weirdo, I, um, I'm troubled, I'm a misfit, I, I'm misunderstood, all of those things, and I wanted to um, paint those colors. So we know you finished filming season four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're at, I, it would be journalistic malpractice like, if I didn't ask if you know anything about season five yet. No, I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's in the air, I guess. But you know what? That's very common of Doom Patrol since its inception. You know, remember DC Universe? Remember that whole thing? Um, yeah, yeah, we were all here and we were like, oh, great, we're starting new streaming service. Um, but we were on there and it was, it's always been kind of like, we'll see how well you do. <laughs> and we'll see how the audience reacts. But I feel like each year, each season, um, the audience has reacted so positively and just so lovingly. And, um, so who knows? I mean, maybe, maybe we will have a bit. Yeah. So I'm going to ask people to start lining up. This will be my last question, and then we'll have people to start. Just come to the microphone at the center here. Um, I'm wondering if you have a, a fandom or something that would be just the dream of your life if you got a chance to do whether it's a specific character or to perform in a specific universe that, that you just you would have your eye on and you would sign without even thinking about it. Um I would say uh, Jessica Cruz, Green Lantern. Um, I voiced her uh, for an animated film I did years ago. That was sort of my introduction to uh, voice work and animation, and I just fell in love with her, and um, and just the way that that was produced. I was really, I'm really proud of that work, and um, so every time I like see, you know, the, the, that that role, I, well, I think only like a few people uh, saw, um, but it was one of my proudest moments. I think. <laughs> yeah. All right. So our first question at the center: Do you want to say your name, and then the question? Hello. Ruby. Ruby, hello. She just wanted hi. to say hi to Isabel. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi, darling. <laughs> hi. Um, my question is, what is your favorite scene that you did from Orange is the New Black and White? Orange is the New Black and White. 
favorites, so you know. Is, that, is anyone able to, are we all able to hear the, I just want to make sure that we can all hear the microphone, because I can't tell. So we'll repeat the question if we can. For the, the question was about the favorite scene in play on Orange is the New Black. My favorite scene on Orange is the New Black, my goodness, so many, so many weird scenes that I got. I really, they reserved only the like kind of little, the little, little vignettes for right, when I came on. Um, but you know what, all much appreciated and loved. And as I meet you guys at, at these conventions, I like, I understand more how much these characters connected with people. And I'm just like, wow, while I was doing it, I was, I was a mess. I had no idea what I was doing. And, um, but it was a lot of fun. Anyway, um, favorite scene. I think it was like when uh, during the like the riots and um, we finally like they like um, they break in and they let us all loose and me and Flack are like walking down and there's like we started to get like a following on social media because we like we had this phone in prison and we were making videos and stuff about like how about your makeup like put this mask on I was like what are we doing um, but when we come we leave the when we leave the, uh, the prison, we're like out and there's like a bunch of fans and like people taking pictures and we're like, oh my god, our fans are here and they're all walking. <laughs> and cut, but like really happy that we had an audience and I just thought that was a really funny moment, from a funny moment and then so redeeming for those two. Thank you. Um, my name is Gracie and if you weren't Isabella, what character would you be and why? Like, from Encanto? Oh, who would I be? Mirabelle. <laughs> I just love her. I, I think she's so funny and, and free. And I think it's kind of like what I aspire to be. I am Isabella. So I am, I am working through long hours in therapy and, and my spiritual connection uh, to the universe to become more like Mirabelle. Yes. So, um, my name is Amelia or Millie. Hi, Amelia. Hi, um, I'm short. Oh, um, I'm <laughs> trying to reach it. Um, if you could be any other character other than who you are, why would you be them and what would you do if you could like choose what to do? Um, like if I could be another character, like any other character? Hmm, yeah, let's see. <sighs> Gosh, I mean I think now I just want to play... Um... A fairy. No, really. I, I, I feel like I, I, I have pointy ears. Um, or not fairy or elf or something like that. Actually, when I come to conventions, like if you ask anybody, I'm always like, where are the ears? Like, let me get some ears. Um, I've always felt somewhat like one of those kinds of creatures, and I feel like I would play them well. Or I'd like to explore that. Thank you. Oh yeah, that's helpful. So my name is Tessie, and I want to ask, what's your favorite superhero? <sighs> my favorite superhero? Um, I would say Wonder Woman.
Hi, my name is Kat, and I wanted to ask, what is your favorite part about being Isabella? part is that I guess at first you don't really understand her because she's she might seem superficial or like she doesn't have much going on other than you know the idea of perfection and then you find out that she's a lot more than that um, and that she wanted to break out from that um, so I think that it's like that that she was able to be strong and still carry on for her family but then decided to be herself in the end. Thank you. Hi, I'll see you here because they're all short. Uh, look, on Doom Patrol, what was the, your favorite personality to play? It was the most fun on set. Um, <laughs> why wasn't it Silverton? No, I'm kidding. Oh, why? Because I was about to say Silverton. <laughs> I mean, I just, I, I love that, like, slickness of her, like, literally cutting people with bad people, with, um, <laughs> only the bad people! Um, but just cutting, cutting with words, or having to, like, you know, you know, be careful with words. Words steam, you know, they matter, you know, it's, it's soup, you know, the words go into the soup, the alphabet soup, and then, you, you know, it's all in there now. So you can't take those letters back. And sometimes they cut your head off. <laughs> so then. Hi, my name's Savannah. And what do you relate with? What, what, do, you, what do you and Isabella have in What you really need is to love yourself, and I think that's what she discovers. Uh, I'm just believing that you're wearing it. If you want to be in any other Disney movie besides a Contra Mocha movie. Oh my gosh, so many. Um, which other movie? Hmm. Oh, actually. Um, the Rescuers. Do you know that movie? Yes. With Miss Bianca and her nervous friend. Um, and they, you know, they go and save that poor little girl, Penny. Um, yeah, so yeah, I'm going to be in the, in the Rescuers. That's like one of my favorite movies. Thanks. Hi. Hi. I teach a uh, children's theater program and they have a whole bunch of students. Do you have any advice you would give to kids who want to grow up and be actresses? Do I have any advice? Um, yeah, I would say get involved in as much, uh, try, try everything, you know. So if you're interested in something, just give yourself that, that chance to see if you like it and see if it goes well with your spirit. Um, join everything, right? Um, and yeah, just and, and and learn as much as you can about it. So read books or um, connect with other other people who are interested in, in the arts and like form a club or a little group or all of you are like reading um, and I don't know doing scenes and and watching like some of your favorite movies and dissecting those. I don't know. How old is your class? We've got ages four to fourteen. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Environment and artists need safety. So my parents can start there. Hi, my name is Kylie. I'm a huge fan of yours. Um, I absolutely love you. I'm Orange is the New Black. What was it like um, making Orange is the New Black, and what were the cast members like? Oh gosh. Um, 
again, another situation where I walked in and I had no idea what this show was going to be like or what it was going to mean to people uh, and who I was working with. I mean, I really did no research. I mean, I got in there and I saw, you know, Natasha Leone and Jason Biggs and I was like, oh, is this a real movie? <laughs> you know, I thought it was like just this internet thing I came in for. You know, web series were like huge then. I mean, but they were just called web series. It's not like streaming. Um, so I had no idea what it, would, what it was going to be like, but everyone has been so fantastic. It was, it was such an incredible journey for all of us to go through that together. Um, but yeah. Thank you. I end everything but yeah. It's <laughs> um, my thing. Okay, we did. Hi, I'm Sophia, and I wanted to ask how long the concert take, took to make. How long did it take to make? Yeah. I mean, kind of well, I mean, probably like six years or something like that. Yeah, it's wild. I mean, somebody from Disney, please don't quote me here, quote me. Um, but yeah, it, it took a while. It took like five to six years. Thank you. Hi. My name is Michaela, and I was asking, like, what was your reaction when you got the part? I was like, why not? Um, it was, I was just screaming up again. I just called my mom and my dad, and I was like, guess what? Um, I, I always used to like perform like during dinner, like I would just be eating and you know I would try to entertain my family singing Disney songs and you know I would get in trouble and I would you know be told to like eat my food and stop singing. Um, <laughs> and I'm like, never were you told to stop singing? Guess what? <laughs> I was wondering how Duke the trouble. Like yeah. Jane has a lot of rage and you know the show goes to some pretty dark places with her. Like, how hard is it to do scenes like that to someone that rage and, you know, do you have to, like, go do something really lighthearted afterwards? Oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, I, the thing is, Jane, it, it's interesting how the universe works because Jane came into my life when I had the most rage inside of me and it needed to be released and explored in, in those ways and, like, in, in, in all of those interesting, beautiful ways that Jane has, has explored that rage. But for me, it was, I mean, Look, us as, as women, as people, like, but mostly women cannot, you know, are, are expected not to express that kind of, those kinds of feelings, you know, they're usually seen as scary, and then in the show they, they were, but I was allowed to be that, and, and it was really helpful, um, I think, for the story and for, for the audience to watch a character like that, and in particular, it made a difference in my life. <laughs> Thanks. How long? I put a spell on you, and now you're gone. I put a spell on you. <laughs> you look great. Well, my name is Amber Harrison, and I was wondering if you've always liked to sing. Yes. <laughs> always, always, always love singing. I would like. What I would do, my parents told me what I would do is I would look through the newspaper, because newspapers were like a thing then. <laughs> and, you know, and they had like all of these, the, the section where, where you had like, you know, promos of like things you would buy at like the electronics store or the Woolworths or whatever, you know. Um, there would be like little things that you, you, you know, that we advertise it. And microphone, I remember a microphone being advertised. I remember, like, I would circle it and cut out the little microphone and leave it in my, like, by where, by where my parents would see it. You know, I'd cut out all the things I wanted, and I would leave it there for them. So a microphone was one of them. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> She's like, long answer, but thanks. <laughs> Like, through these past few years, it was 
you know, I struggled with some mental health issues and I just wanted to say thank you. But also, I'm also an immigrant in my country, I'm Pacific, and just the work that you do we are at, you, you know, for your people is an inspiration as well. Jane's such a complex character and um, just obviously it's like jumped you into this realm of like mental health. I don't know if people like approach you too much about like obviously mental health and stuff like that and just how I guess how we able to approach like being able to play a character that, that moves through so many different feelings and so many different you know yeah. different characters because of my experience um, growing up um, uh, as, a, as a child, I had a lot of those, um, I, I, I experienced a lot of different kinds of emotions at a very early age, and, um, and I had them sort of um, inside of me always, and um, I, I was so desperate to for an outlet, and, and Doom Patrol came into my life and, and provided that outlet. For me, um, it, it was difficult in the beginning because I, as the character was struggling, I was also struggling in my mental health. <sighs> you know, and it's it's totally, it, it just it just went hand in hand. That doesn't mean that every time you play a character that you're going to be experiencing the same thing. It just happened for me that I that I was. And um, and so it was difficult, yes, and, and it took a long time to sort of like, um, understand that Jane was going through things, but Diane was going through things separately, and that it was okay to relax, it was okay to be good to yourself, it was okay to say no, it was okay to sleep, <laughs> and it was okay not to scream. <laughs> Maybe, you know, fine. Yeah. Also, thank you so thank much. Thank you You're so amazing. much. Thank you. What a great audience. Thank you, thank you so much for coming. Mirabel, 
Did I say Miranda? No. Okay. Um, Isabel lo loves and admires Vida Vida so much that she hasn't been able to tell her, so when she finally does, that's what breaks, like, that's what kind of makes everything move forward so that the family could heal. So I love that moment at the end of the song of what else can I do? Um, right? You get it. No, are you kidding me? I have tons. <laughs> All right, starting with La Usurpadora. Okay? I forget, I don't know how to translate that word in, in, in English. La Usurpadora. Ursurper? Ursula. Right, exactly. So it was like twins and things happen. Now, um, Maria Mercedes. Anybody? Marimar? Baila conmigo? Here. 
And so for me, it was a very worthy cause. And um, and I, I, I studied political science and communication in college. And, you know, tried paralegal work. I tried a bunch of stuff before that. And I, and I you know, I traveled abroad and I did study globalization and um, international relations in DC. And I tried doing all of that. It didn't work out for me, obviously, because I did not like to read those textbooks. <laughs> to be like up on the news, I'm like, boring, I don't care about this. Um, but, but, all of that said, a lot of that still stuck with me, and I needed to share a story that was going to resonate with millions of families in this country and, 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 and people all over the world, so um, it was a great honor for me to share that story. At first, it came with a lot of shame, and I'm happy to say that I'm proud of my story. What we want to see, peace and love and, and unity. And so, and you know, keep, keep on trucking. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. Hey, a wop bop, a wop bop, a wop bamboo. Do it, Rude. What? Is that not a skirt from this from that time? Uh, uh, poodle skirt? Yeah, it's a poodle skirt. Ah, there you go. I knew it was somewhere. <laughs> My question is, what is your favorite movie that wasn't made by Disney? Um, favorite movie that wasn't made by Disney? Oh my gosh. Okay, this is gonna... So I have two favorite movies. Um, one is The Little Princess. Do you know The Little Princess? Uh, right? I mean, just such an incredible movie. The second is Commando. And my god, that movie really got me going. I mean, when he when he pulls and when they when they're driving in that little car and they go into the place with all the bazookas and all the ammo and he like breaks her door, she's like, my god! And then he goes and he's like, step away. Like blows up the doors and he has all this muscle. Anyway, he gets all that ammo and just goes and handles his business and then he goes and rescues his daughter, Alyssa Manano! Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. She's like that 